On this episode of Death by Bungie, Bungie and I try to fill a tag in the Pennsylvania crossbow season. So this evening, if we get uh, some does down in this food plot, get them in here, get them comfortable, the bucks might mill around on the edge and venture in. Usually in my experience, all the bucks do is come in and chase all the does out. I don't know why. I don't know why bucks don't feel the need to eat anything when they're in the food plot, but that's just the way it is sometimes. This is the year of the food plots, as I've mentioned. If you've followed Death by Bungie, you've seen all the food plot videos I did. I wanted to point out, too, that if you're interested in that sort of thing, I've categorized on our Death by Bungie YouTube page the videos according to playlists. So you can just log on there and look at uh, videos of just food plot videos, or you can look at just hunting videos, or just cooking with Bungie, or anything like that if you're interested in those things. It's kind of interesting, so if take a look at that if you haven't already. That way you can find those videos a little bit quicker if you're interested in those. I've got several nice food plots to hunt over uh, this year. Trail cameras set up on them. I have one in the middle of the woods down below the apple tree there that I call the staging food plot. It's what I planted with a blend of no sweat from Antler King pretty happy with the way that turned out. Here we are at the end of October and it's still lush and green and looks like it would be attracting deer. The trail camera that I had in there only has a handful of pictures, one of which was a blurry picture of a buck making his way through. Apparently he didn't stop to eat anything, but it, from what I can tell it looked like a nice buck. I did sit over that food plot a couple of times and I didn't get any action at all. Uh, I sat in there and in fact, the weather wasn't cooperating too great. It was great to be sitting in a ground plane, I can tell you that much, because it started raining, and then that rain turned into hail. I sat through a hailstorm for a while. It gives new meaning to the phrase, all hail bungee. <laughs> now, just up the hill from that staging plot, of course, is the apple tree. I think deer are more attracted to the apple tree. If they're going to be in that area, they're going to go straight to the apple tree and see what fell, see what's on the ground there. That 100-year-old apple tree, I don't know if it's really 100 years old, but it's darn close to it. It was around when my grandfather was a kid, that's for sure. Uh, it's a, an ancient tree. It was part of an orchard of trees that we had at one time. I have sat there a couple of times. You may recall I shot a nice nanny doe there earlier in the season, filled my first tag of the year of the Pennsylvania crossbow season, my first tag of the 37 days of awesome. Since that time, I've sat in there and saw a family of does come in. I was tempted to take a shot. They were in there, they fed for a while, they were real comfortable. But this time of year, I'm kind of holding off in case a buck follows them in. And then maybe you get a shot at a buck over those food plots or under those apple trees. That's kind of the reason I'm holding off a little bit. On that particular night, nobody came in except for those does. They went through there, fed a little bit, and made their way through. Nobody else came in. 
just up the hill from me here, I've got a nice patch of what I planted was called uh, Honey Hole from Antler King. And uh, I've got turnips in there the size of softballs. It's amazing how well that did. Still think it's a little bit early for that. If you look at it, they've been hitting the tops of that stuff. I would have thought that the clover would have lost its flavor by now. But apparently that's not the case. I look down in here and uh, they're still eating the tops off this clover. The trail camera's still showing activity here uh, this late in October. So the clover is a good food source all the way through the, the crossbow season or toward the end of the crossbow season it appears. You know, they're hitting those brassicas in that honey hole plot a little bit, but uh, you can see down here where they've been bedding and there's plenty of clover left. Uh, it's an amazing crop, so I'm sold on the clover. I'll definitely be including that in all my future food plots, my plants. I mean, it's, it's just a great crop. On this clover food plot, I've hunted this once or twice is all so far this year. I came down one morning. It's tough to hunt the early season in the morning. You end up kicking out more deer than you, than you see, I think. It's more of an afternoon thing. Uh, but I got in here and I kicked the doe out on the way in and I set up and there were a couple of young does that came through. Went through here at 100 miles an hour and uh, never got a shot. Couldn't even get a good video of them. I didn't have the camera completely set up even. <laughs> but they made their way through at 100 miles an hour. I thought maybe there's a big buck chasing or something, but nobody else made an appearance so forget that idea I guess uh, but nevertheless I have sat here that's about all the activity I've had you can probably hear the old compressor station up there on the hill churning away that is not the well pad I call this the well pad food plot book because behind me there's a, a well pad uh, right on the neighbor's property bordering this property cut right up close to the property line and you would think wow with a well pad there you're not going to shoot any deer but the reality is it kind of helps in the end because it creates like a man-made barrier behind me and kind of keeps the deer out in front of me if you know what i mean and if i shoot a deer it's more likely to stay right here and head back deeper into our property than it is to go back on the neighbor so it's actually a win-win I was surprised when they first put that in. I was I was crushed because it changes the property where I grew up. I've been around here my whole life, and to see it change, it's always hard to accept change for me. But that so far has worked out all right. I'm hopeful tonight that we'll get a family of does and get some activity in here, get some uh, does in the field here, and then get a big buck to come by sniffing around, and maybe we'll get a shot. A visitor. It's not a deer. It's a field mouse or something. Hey, little guy. He doesn't seem to be too concerned. It's a field mouse or something. Getting something to eat. What are you doing, huh? Okay, get out of here. Get out of there. Go. Been a little too close for comfort there. Can't be making himself at home in here. <laughs> you see all kinds of things out here. That was neat. Back to the deer. Now, before too long, a couple of does make their way into the bottom end of the food plot. They come in off to my hard left, looking down there. I can see them, and they're feeding in the clover there. I'm not particularly interested in shooting a doe at this time. I've already filled that one doe tag. I do have another doe tag left, uh, but I'm waiting to see if any bucks will accompany them into the food plot. So I decided to sit and catch the show, watch those deer feed. Those two does fed for nearly 45 minutes in the bottom end of that food plot, and eventually one of the does made her way out into the center of the food plot. Now this is a, a good 25 yard shot, according to the distances that I had pre-marked with my rangefinder. Uh, and I thought that that's easily a shot I could take if she gave me a broadside shot. Again, I wasn't particularly looking for a doe this evening. I'm confident because I'm sitting there in black clothes inside that enclosed blind that she couldn't see me, couldn't see me moving. I was real careful not to move the crossbow in front of the window. I was very careful not to move or adjust the camera unless she was looking away, even though I'm wearing black gloves and black sleeves. Uh, I sat there and waited for my opportunity and hoped that she would just move on. Unfortunately, uh, as the other doe continued to feed, this one was just not going anywhere. She's looking right at me. 
Now I'm thinking this hunt is probably over. That doe is probably a matter of time based on my experience with these deer. That once they get locked onto you like that, eventually they're gonna stomp their foot, they're gonna snort, they're gonna blow out of there and alert every other deer in the area that you're there. It's happened to me before and I'm, it's happened to me before this season. It's happened to everybody who goes out into the woods, of course, if you're chasing white-tailed deer, that's bound to happen. Um, I'm waiting for her to do that and I figured as long as she's going to do that, and this hunt's probably going to end anyway, I might as well go ahead and fill that second doe tag. I lift up Bungie, I get him sighted in, I get the reticles all set up, a perfect 25 yard shot. Bungie and I, we're going to take that shot. Well, that was not best shot. You can see that it hits the deer right in the spine. It spines her and incapacitates her, puts her on the ground immediately. She's not going anywhere, but it's pretty obvious that it wasn't a fatal shot. She's not bleeding, she's not weakening, she's not even slowing down. Uh, she's just suffering in the middle of a food plot. Now, looking back, it's clear that Bungie was sighted in properly. And in fact, the shot was a good shot. If you look at where that uh, arrow was headed based on the Luminoc, the arc of that arrow looks like it was headed right to the lungs, right to the perfect shot, right uh, where I was aiming. Unfortunately, in the last five yards or so of that arrow's path, that deer drops a few inches and pulls that arrow right into her spine. I have shot quite a few deer with a crossbow. I've been hunting with a crossbow since 2010. In the last few years, I've been hunting with it exclusively. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, out of the many deer that I've shot, I've shot quite a few deer with a crossbow. Only two of them have ever jumped a string like this before. Now, of course, I don't want this deer to suffer. The first thing I do is I immediately cock the crossbow. I don't wait to get the rope cocker back out of my pocket. I just cock it by hand. I grab another arrow out of my quiver. Uh, I had three arrows with me that day. I take that arrow, I put it in the crossbow, load the crossbow, aim it, and fire. I don't know what just happened. It sounds like a shotgun went off inside the blind and my ears are ringing. All I know is I basically misfired the crossbow. I don't know at this point if I cocked it in properly. I don't know if I just didn't load the arrow properly, but that arrow falls right off the end of the crossbow, right off the rail, and lands 10 feet in front of the blind. So I immediately grab another arrow. I cock the crossbow once again by hand. I throw the second arrow in there, my last arrow, aim that crossbow and pull the trigger, and exactly the same thing happens. That loud bang, the crossbow uh, misfires, and the arrow lands 10 or 15 feet in front of the blind. Now I'm out of arrows, I've got a deer struggling in front of me, and no means of killing that deer with a crossbow. So what do I do? I do the only humane thing that I can do. I do the only thing that I have in my power to do. I go through my bag, I get out my hunting knife, and I make my way across that food plot. I hold the deer down, and I have to kill that deer with my bare hands with my hunting knife. This is not what I envisioned for a Halloween outing. This is not what I envisioned as far as the way this hunt was supposed to end. It is not the way I would want any hunt to end. For anybody to be faced with this, it's not something you want to do. But I think I made the right decision overall, and I would make that decision immediately, a hundred times over, given the fact that I think it's the right thing to have done. One of the things I like about Death by Bungie, one of the things I want to try and do with this channel, with this show, is to help other people who might be hunting with a crossbow who are faced with similar situations, give you information to uh, sort of handle these situations if they arise for you. Hopefully you're never faced with a situation like this. Uh, but there's a couple of things I want you to consider if you are. The first is safety. You're approaching a deer that's injured, that's flailing about with a sharp object, with a hunting knife. Be very careful in doing that when you go out there. If it was a buck, I probably would be a little bit hesitant to approach it because you might get gored by an antler. Uh, you want to be careful when you're out there. You don't want to get kicked by the deer. You don't want to get hurt. And you don't want to accidentally stab yourself with your own knife. All of those things are very real possibilities. The other thing you want to look into about this is the legality of it. Now, in Pennsylvania, uh, our crossbow season allows you to take a deer with only two hunting implements. The first is a compound bow, uh, and the second is a crossbow. You can use either of those implements. A hunting knife is not a legal hunting implement. However, I've since spoken with two different game commission officers, conservation officers here in Pennsylvania, who both agreed with me that they would not prosecute a case such as this, given the fact that they chalked it up to what they called the mercy rule. And the idea there is that this was a mercy killing, you're putting the animal out of its misery. Now, 
I'm sure if there was some sort of hunting violation going on, the mercy rule is not going to apply. I can tell you now that Bungie is okay. I've fixed the problem and we're back to hunting uh, as of the current day, but I'll be giving you the details as to what went wrong in the near future. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like our page on Facebook as well, because I post updates on there too. And until next time, all hail Bungie! The second state is number one in my